Good morning, world. I wanted to talk today about age, aging. Scary. <laughs> I uh, was triggered by a comment that someone made that said, you shouldn't call you say you're 50 years old. You should say you're 50 years young. And everybody clamored around the idea that that yes, in fact, you should identify with your years as young, youth. And I protest in the name of aging with grace, the idea that for some reason we have to cling to youth to consider ourselves valid or worthy or whatever the hell is attached to it. And uh, I don't. I... Uh, I love the process of aging, even though it's a little bit of a shocker <laughs> when you see your, your gravity <laughs> altering your persona. And for this reason, I've come to you today with no makeup. This is the real deal and proud of it. And, you know, also to announce that I'm 66 and I'm going to be 67 in January. And I think I'm doing okay. So <laughs> I am 66 years old and soon will be 67 years old. And, you know, I just, I just can't stand word manipulation, word correction, word uh, confinement. And I think that at 66, 67, that fits. I'm 67 years old. So I want to talk about the process that I see around me. We all know that the youth culture is driven society to near insane levels. I look at people who are 25, 30 years old, they're already doing putting Botox in to maintain some idea of what they what they're supposed to look like. And by the time they put in, you know, a couple of years of Botox, they look like salamanders. <laughs> And, you know, no offense to salamanders, but my, my uh, attempt here to make light of the situation is to have us take a look at what this is about. I was working with a woman who uh, had a terrible, traumatic experience when a doctor told her she had some bone-destroying disease in her face that was going to eventually make her face cave in, and she would remain told this by a doctor. Um, she would remain um, pretty much a deformed person within a few years. And she was this very beautiful, she is this very beautiful woman. And so she came to me for help. She was desperately unhappy. And we did a few psychic readings. And, you know, I, I said to her, do you, have you done Botox? And she looked down, she said, yes, I I just quit about three months ago. I go, girlfriend, what you've got is the body trying to release the addiction. There's no question that Botox and all pl plastic surgery, there seems to be something very addictive about it because people, once they start, they can't stop. They keep doing it like every other addictive substance and until they, they start looking very deformed. doesn't take long. But in the case of Botox, this is... Botulism toxin is where you get the name Botox from. And people are ejecting this directly into their faces and wondering why after they start having weird symptoms, which include tingling and uh, pain uh, shooting through the face and whatever. So I want to talk about what it means to age with grace. You look at the people that are doing this, I mean, I have people in my own life who are 30 years old, they're already Botoxing, they're putting in cheek implants, chin implants. It's like, hold on a minute. You know, what, are you, what are you gonna look like when you're 67 years old? You know? And where if there, if, if there isn't that light inside, there's nothing you can do for beauty. If it's not coming through those eyes, baby, you, your beauty has to fade. It's just a process of, of aging and that's okay, because what replaces the beauty, if there is that light inside, is wisdom and experience and 
knowledge and the journey of living. I wouldn't want to be young again for any reason. It's a good thing because I haven't figured out how to time travel back to my youth yet. It was fraught with just so many wonderful things, but also the quest to maintain my weight, the quest to, I mean, and I'm talking about, you know, always being on starvation diet so that I could always maintain this ridiculous form. The minute I ate a piece of bread, poof, up came a couple pounds. And uh, the quest for beauty, the quest to be approved. But the, 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 this absolute fanaticism about youth now is, it's, it's off the charts. It's just ridiculous. So I'd love to send out a message here for people who are struggling with this process that number one, look at your icons. Actors need their facial expression to convey emotion and individuality, what the, the unique, their uniqueness that they bring to the screen. But that's disappearing and we've just got a bunch of, you know, emotionless faces that don't move because they're totally numb from Botox or because their plastic surgery has pushed their skin back to their ears. And I, you know, I, I can't imagine what I'd be without my expressions. They make me who I am, every wrinkle. And boy, do I have them. I mean, look. Oh my God. Look, wrinkles. Oh my God, wrinkles on my lips too. As, as that beautiful youth transforms, it's not even fading as I said earlier, but it transforms into something so much deeper. When you, especially when you convey how much you love life, how much you are content with your yourself, your being, and how much you express that through your eyes and, and laughter. I look at these young people. I mean, I just cannot believe that... I take it back. I can't believe it. I struggle with it. That 25-year-olds are, are already so frightened of the transformation of a little age 25 that they're starting to inject botox poison into their face we all know that botox numbs relaxes let's say or numbs uh, the muscle whatever it's being injected into it is poison and you keep you put that in every what three weeks and then wonder why when you're 40 45 50 you've got health issues not to mention Emotional issues. You look at the Hollywood group. They are unrecognizable. And they don't see it. So, you know, when, when on the rare occasion that I watch anything resembling a TV program, which I only get through, through Netflix, the actors are caricaturesque. There's no face. There's no... It's just, they're all Botox to the schmitherines. And the occasional survivor of the whole youth phenomenon. I think Susan Sarandon, for example, she she held out, I think lately, the last time I saw her, she looked a little different. So, But she did hold out for quite a while and brought to her presence and the screen that beauty that is also aging. I just don't get it. I don't get it. At any rate, I know I'm speaking to the choir when I say what matters is taking care of your health, concentrating on that, making sure as much as you can that you you treat you take care of your body, but not because you want it to maintain this unachievable perfection of you, which is not going to happen, but rather that it reflects your life, good living, and care, and uh, take care of your mind more than anything else. Take care of your mind. Here's where you maintain your youth. Do wonderful things. Don't be afraid to get out of the chair. 
And by the chair, I mean the convention of what you think your life is going to be, your life is. I had someone also tell me that, you know, if he'd only discovered the spirit community and his spiritual path when he was younger, and he was 65. And I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> You've got another 30 years or so to develop that on your way back to spirit. What are you going to do with those years? And I admit it's getting harder to climb up the pyramid than it was when I started bringing people there. But I'll never stop until I can't get up. Because it's there. It's not because I'm trying to keep my youth. It's because it's wonder. It's full of wonder to do the things I love to do, to discover new things. And I invite you all to do that and to celebrate age. Don't let me tell you you're, you're 67 years young. You're not. You're 67 years old. And it's good. And when I look at the travails of society today and the, I have to say, some pretty misdirected youth, I think about the values that were instilled in us when we were young. We often talk about the joy of a society that's disappearing where we could play out all night. We used to play kick the can in the cul-de-sac where I lived as a kid. Nobody was afraid of being snatched. Uh, there wasn't any TV or computer that would, would take precedence over that. We played, we got muddy, we didn't take vaccines, we got the measles. Um, as much as possible, the people who lived in, in this generation of mine, I've been told that baby boomers are evil, but, you know, so be it, can contribute still to the, what I think is really the misguided norms that are really afflicting our societies and our children. Help them possibly unplug Smell the air, get into the forest, et cetera, et cetera. I, certainly you all know that this is my mantra over and over again. But thank God that I was there for that. Thank God I was young at that time. Because the challenges of youth today, I, I don't envy the youth. I don't envy the parents whatsoever. All right, well, that's my spiel. I wanted to come to you in all my beautiful age all 67 years. And I'm not saying I'm beautiful, I'm saying age is beautiful. And experience and all the things that I've done and all the things that lie before me. And I can tell you this, if tomorrow is my time of going, I have to preface that by saying, the other night I was lying on the couch and I felt everything fading. Probably I was just nodding off into sleep, but I was looking and all of a sudden everything started to bleach out. And I was like, oh my God, am I going? And I fell asleep, so <laughs> it was that. But I can truly say that if, to, if my time of going is tomorrow, man, I'll be looking back at this life going, phew, what a journey. Yes, fraught with problems, heartache. Loss, filled with joy, love, excitement. And all of it is what the process is, being alive. Hopefully finding the joy, aging with grace, aging with dignity, with all your wrinkles and, like the Desiderata says, with all its sham and drudgery, it's still a beautiful world. With all your wrinkles and caved in lines, you're still a beautiful soul. Oh my God, see that in the mirror. I stop worrying about being young. Leave youth to the struggling Botoxers who you may or may not be able to convince that it's all an illusion. And uh, join me in this celebration of aging and learning and growing and looking forward to whatever else life offers. I'm going to close with saying that, by the way, speaking of it, of what life offers, don't forget, I have two very exciting programs coming up, and I'm not 
I, I've said this a couple of times now, but this might be the one final moment when it comes to predictions of my activities. I really am not sure if I'll be doing any more after 2019 because I've got lots of other th directions I want to go. But at any rate, don't forget that I've got Egypt, the road less traveled in April 2019 which is going to be unlike any other journey out there. This is a journey behind the scenes. We're going to visit Akhenaten's uh, utopia and places you just don't get to. And uh, a nine-day cruise so that the comfort is taken care of while we go explore the mysteries of Egypt and with a focus on the ET connection. And it's going to be great. We've got... 25 people. I've got two spots left. I need to fill these spots. So, you know what? I don't want to be mm, scary, but the writing is on the wall that we're at the clamping down of travel. In America, now you've got the uh, national card coming up, national ID card with your fingerprints and your retina and all this stuff. And Many sites are, are altering the sites. Egypt is definitely changing. If you want to see the world, baby, get off of your assets and invest in your life. Invest in yourself. And one of these great ways to do that is to come with me to Egypt. We're going to have a blast. And my other program is in June, and it's Remember Atlantis. Because as you know, those of you who know me know that I'm convinced I've discovered some part of Atlantis here in the Azores and this mystical isle, these mystical isles, but particularly mine. And everybody who comes here feels it. So uh, that's in June. We swim with wild dolphins, a one day workshop. We're going to swim with wild dolphins. We're going to sail with the whales. We're going to taste nature and explore that magnetism that is Atlantis together. And uh, give yourself that gift. If it's not with me, well, somewhere, give yourself the gift of exploring this world while you still can. And not because you're an old fart, but because it's getting harder and harder to travel. It's getting harder and harder to see the authentic. Things are changing drastically. Don't miss them. Don't miss them. All right, guys. I uh, got to be careful not to start preaching. And... I am not trying to sell you. I just, you know, people ask me, how do I do it? And how do I stay so youthful and whatever? And which is the subject we started with. The answer is I always have something to look forward to. And I seek it, seek things that titillate me, titillate my mind and create joy and wonder in my life. And I invite you to do that. Okay. All right. This is. Trisha Corey, signing out. Thank you for listening. And please, if you like the messages I'm bringing out, I'd appreciate this click on the subscriber list because something magical apparently happens when you're a thousand subscribers. I think I get to go to YouTube heaven or something. <laughs> so please click subscribe. Tell your friends if they want an uplifting message to tune in to a moment of Zen with Patricia Corey. Bless you all. Take care.